Today's project is going to entail skinning a walleye, measuring skinning. First thing I do is after I thaw it out, and they'll thaw out in a couple hours in water. I just throw them in two, three hours in water and they'll thaw out. But I put them in my borax to get all the slime off and then I just brush the borax off. I work that borax in the head area and the gill area. I like to keep, I like to get the slime off so that my hands aren't slippery. Then I'll just brush the majority of that borax off. This walleye is probably right in the eight pound range this morning. Seems to be in pretty good shape. First step we have to do is when I checked with my log, this fish is to be mounted best side with a reverse curve, which is I just call that. That's just going to be tail up, back to the wall, come around a piece of driftwood. So I have to determine what the best side is. I'll do that by looking at the fins, the gills. If there's any cut scars, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick him going left because he's got the best coloration left to him, the best natural pigment. The, looks like he was laying on his right side. He's got a lot of blotching on the right side. Those spots won't paint back near as nice when you go to paint this fish and finish it. So now we have to log this fish in. So he's going to be left. Reverse curve. Now we'll need the measurements to order our body. So first measurement is going to be an overall length measurement. From the tip of the mouth to the V of the tail, 28 inches. Next one we're going to go from right under the gill plate where the body would be to the base of the tail. We're going to log that one in at 18 inches. Then we're going to take a girth measurement. That's going to be about 14 and 3 quarters. Now that's what we'll use to determine the size of the body we use. I already know what body it's going to be. I use my bodies that I use. I use the old line series from um, Reinhardt yet. I know this fish is going to be a right turn and just by knowing the size and number of fish I do I don't even have to look this is going to be an 18 and a half RU that will give me my reverse curve and but you can you can pick there's a lot of good fish bodies on the market it's whatever you get your customers used to that's just what I'm used to mounting on I've just never shied away from it over the years, I get good mounts out of it, so I've stayed with that mount. Um, we'll try to do some fish carving, body carving videos for you so you learn how to carve your own fish bodies. But today, today is gonna, we're going to concentrate more on the skinning. So now that we know he's going to be going to the left, we make sure we make our incision on the proper side. So we flip him over. I'll take a scalpel right in front of the tail and I'll make a slit and get my scissors in. Now this, this fish is going to be a one-sided mount to go on the wall. So we make our seam down the back of the fish. If you were doing a pedestal mount, there's two ways to do that. I've had some guys tell me they dig it all out and don't even make a seam. When I do a pedestal mount, I make a seam right down the center of the fish, one side or other of the fin, down to the tail. And I skin it out that way, but for all practical purposes, this is a one-sided mount, so we're going to make the seam down the back side of the mount. I'll just take a good scissors. We 
or shears of some type, if you, whatever you find you like. I use that. I keep a good shears around to go through the bones when I get up to the bone up here in the throat latch area. I cut that. Take my scalpel and I'll just cut inside through here behind the gills, between the gills and the body, I'll cut that loose. I've always got a dry towel on hand to keep my hands dry. I've always got my borax ready to keep my hands dry. Now I use a fish skinning knife out of Van Dyke's. It's got a serrated edge to it. And make sure you always skin from the tail to the head so you don't pop the scales. If you go the other way, you'll be going against the scales underneath and you'll have a tendency to pop them up. So always start at the tail. Go towards the head when you're skinning. Now I, I leave some meat on the fish. I don't get real careful at this point. I'll take that all off of the scraper. Right now my goal is to get the skin off the body with as least amount of scale damage as I can. One thing when you thaw fish, I had to learn this the hard way. Don't ever thaw them out in hot water. That'll cause the scales to pop in itself. I got in a hurry one day and threw it in hot water. And now this is a practice deal again. Get fish if you can. Five, six pound, four pound fish, whatever. Skin them out for practice. I got my shears. I'm up here in the fin area. Cut these bones with the shears. And down to the fin, the bottom fin bone here, I'll cut that off with the shears. Once I get all the bottom fins cut loose, I'm going to flip this around. And that's just, you don't have to flip around, that just makes it easier when I go this way with the knife. I can, and as you can see, I'm always keeping the skin held in one hand, keeping it tight as with any, anything you skin. The tighter it keeps, the easier it is to skin. careful like on all these fins that you don't cut through the skin. Now we've got it loose on both sides all the way down. I'm going to cut the tailbone off. At this point I'm probably leaving about a half inch of bone in there yet. I'll take that out once the body's gone. It's just easier to get at. Top fins, dorsal fins. I can cut loose at this time. As I said, this all comes just like any other thing you do in taxidermy. It takes practice to get efficient and fast at all this. You're gonna, you're gonna spend a lot more time on your first few than you will down the line just because of learning where to cut, how to cut. That's why I always stress if you can find fish or birds or anything that you can just practice on skin and practice on mounting, 
If you mess it up skinning it, you can throw it away, but if you're learning the trade, learn how to fix those mistakes you make, because sooner or later you're going to make that mistake on a customer's mount and you're going to have to fix it. So don't ever think that mistakes are a bad thing because the more you do and practice and learn, the better. That's this, this whole series of videos, you'll find that I try to stress more on the repair, I think what makes a good tax thermos is learning how to repair, being able to troubleshoot a problem as it arises because we're dealing with stuff that has scars, battle scars, shot, you know, these animals are killed somehow, they shoot them, you'll have customers bring them in and gut, have them gutted, you gotta repair all that stuff, so. The more you learn how to repair while you're learning, the better you'll be when you start doing customers work. There I made a boo-boo, don't, don't bend that head and body if you don't have to. This is the worst part of fish right here. Get rid of the body, I have no use for that. Before I had dogs, when I had a spot I could get them in a garden. I used to bury them bodies in my garden and it was tremendous fertilizer, but my dogs seemed to like to dig them up so I had to quit doing that. Just going to start cleaning the skin off carefully. Get rid of all the bone, all the meat. This clavicle bone down here has to be removed for the most part. Remove the rest of the bone all the way down into the gullet, cutting it free, trying to be careful not to rip the rip the gills out. this meat and stuff out. At this point I'm going to go in and I'm going to take the basically the bone that connects the all the way up into the top of the head. Trying to be careful not to go through the top of the head as I take this bone out. There again a good sharp snip that you can get some leverage on. It's very important in cutting your way through that stuff and removing all that. Side of the top of the brain. And don't think it's the end of the world if you cut a hole in the top of the head because you're going to repair most of the head anyway and rebuild it back because you're going to have shrinkage up there. But it's very important to get all this meat and bone out of here in order to get a proper mount. I had a guy walk in my shop one time. Wanted me to repair some fish he got back from another tax service that were stinking. Well, he left all this stuff in the head and guess what? Rotten fish is not good smell. I wouldn't even repair it. I guarantee he ended up throwing that away. 
He'd had them shipped to him and they stunk when he got them. Very poor, very poor taxidermy. Quality of the fish was okay. I mean, they weren't bad, they were painted okay, but the meat, the meat was not gone. I got a scraper, just a fish fleshing thing. Now you'll notice right now I'm coming towards myself on the head. For the most part, you don't want to do that, but you can't. You got to reach up in the head. You got to come at yourself. And there ain't no scales on top of the head, but where the scales start, you want to quit coming towards yourself and start going away. We'll take this knife and we'll go along these upper fins, lower fins. As you'll notice, I'm always scraping with the scales, not against them. Make sure when you're skinning, you also don't want any of that meat underneath your skin, because when you go to start fleshing that, you'll rip that right out. Our next step is going to be removing the eyes and the cheek meat. Keep a little handy scissors on hand. Shouldn't be talking while I'm moving the eyes. They blow up quite often. You'll end up eating them. So I just basically dig in, cut around the edge of the eyes and pull the eyes right out of the eye socket. Now we're going to take our skinning knife again and we're carefully going to work it in underneath the Skin on the cheek. Right now I can see my knife right here. I've got it away from the skin. Now I'm going to go on the other side of the cheek meat. Remove it from the bone. And then I'll just carefully work it out of there. Use my scissors to cut it loose at the bottom here towards the jaw. Done right, should come out in one pretty nice chunk of meat. There'll be a little left that'll have to be scraped, but scraped and cut out, but for the most part that's your that's your cheek meat. Properly taken out it'll come. Now I watched a really high tech fish guy one day remove the cheek meat right with the body. I don't get that high tech, but I don't know if he was doing it to show off or if he did it that way all the time, but he skinned that bass pretty fast and removed it right with it. So I mean he knew he knew what he was doing and but he probably did thousands of fish, you know, over the time and he studied fish and that was his specialty. So he got really efficient, really good at it. And he was actually teaching seminars at a national NTA National Taxidermy Association program one year. And I decided to go watch his seminars and I learned a lot from him, but I still don't remove the cheek meat with the body like he did. Looked to me like it'd just be more work than it's worth. Okay, cheek meat's out. Keep a pair of eight or ten inch forceps around for this next step while I'm doing fish. I'll take my scalpel. You gotta get the um, meat along the jaw lines out. There's some just a little line of meat in there, but it's enough meat it'll cause problems at one cure, right? So I just make a cut on that inside that jaw. And start cutting it away. 
Then I'll reach in towards the back and I'll grab it with that forceps and I'll use my scalpel and I'll just cut it out. Now I leave the tongue and I'm, I'll inject that later, but there's a chunk of jaw meat out on one side. And now we'll take the other piece out. Go back in with my skinny knife and scrape off anything that's extra. For the most part, I think we got most of the head cleaned already. Now we'll start back here on the tail and the fin areas and carefully use your skinning knife and go up all the way to the edge of the meat in this tail. I say carefully because it's really thin when you get right at the edge and you'll go right out through the back side of that fish and you'll have a hole in it right where the tail connects and it's probably one of the hardest ones to repair and get to look good but the other part is if you don't get all this meat out it'll shrink so bad that you have to repair it and then you got to texture it and paint it so you don't want that to happen either so you have to get all this bone and meat out down to where these tail fins, tail rays come together. If you pay attention, there's just about to the end of the scale. Scales go maybe a half inch farther than what I'm going to go at. I got it trimmed loose in there now. I'm just going to go in there with my little clippers. They sell these in the trade magazines or the heart or the garden centers. Find yourself something that'll work. I got two, three sets of these around. I use them on birds and fish. There's your, there's the end of your tailbone. That's all cleaned out. Now we're gonna just keep working on these fin areas and as you can see I use a lot of borax to keep things dry so my hands can hang on to stuff while I'm doing this process. Now I use a scissors normally to cut these off and I'm very careful. I want them as close to the skin as I can get but yet I don't want to cut that skin if at all possible. Bone quits right and we'll be okay. Okay, right, we'll go back to these taking these bones out of these fins. I like to cut them as close as possible without going through. Remove as much as I can so I don't get shrinkage away. Same with the bottom bones. Usually I have to cut around the anus with the scissors, that won't come off with the flesher. Trim them as close as you can. Always have my fingers on the opposite side so I know right where my blades are running. Basically all you're doing right now is removing all the bone, all the, any bone and any meat you can get off of this critter at this point will keep it from stinking and keep it, make it a better mount. Now very carefully I make sure I don't have any wrinkles and towels or anything underneath the skin. Take my fleshing tool, I keep the skin tight with one hand, 
And I just scrape from the tail towards the head. Takes pretty good pressure down in order to get that stuff scraped off, but always keep your skin tight. And make sure your fins, when you go over the center, have your fins to the back. When you go over the back, have your skins to the center so they aren't hitting, sitting up underneath and causing scale damage. As you can see how this skin's starting to clean up. Now over the years I've saved myself a number of these back dorsal fins and spread them out, dried them and just stored them. They'll never show in the mount. You don't do anything with them in the mount. They just get folded against the body anyway. I do that for if I got wrecked ones that I need to replace a fin or a fin gone. Every once in a while you get a fish in where the fin's actually gone that you got to replace it. So I just, like I said, I don't have to on this one because I've got a pretty good collection saved up already. More than I'll probably ever use, so. For the most part, I think we've got the skin clean. I'm going to take it to the sink. I'm going to rinse it off good so I can look it over better. Just going to run cold water through it. Wash it off. See a few more spots. I just want to scrape a little bit more off. Once I got it washed off, I can see some stuff that'll come off. I, I like to get these fish clean. At least as clean as I can. Now I skin these fish. I'll put them back. I'll wrap them in a wet towel and put them back in the freezer and order a body for them. If you're making your body, you could start processing this fish for mounting right away, but it'll be probably a week before I even order the body for these. I'm just skinning everything I got right now. I like to do my fish in batches. I usually do three batches a year, and the reason I do that is when I start making up my solutions for tanning them and my paints for painting them. It's just takes as much time to mix them up whether you're doing one or ten. And I'd rather paint ten fish in a day than one. Especially when it takes a couple hours to get everything cleaned up and ready to go painting around my place. 
Now, don't get me wrong, when I was just getting into taxidermy, I did one at a time just because I had it to do. But All I'm doing now is the final cleaning up in the head area. Wherever I can see something I can grab a hold of and get out of there, I get it out of there. And you'll see that's that skin's clean enough to mount. More of that might be removed as we mount it, once it dries, once I go through the next steps. I'll explain the next steps in a minute. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to skin quite a few fish at one time, so I got some plastic tags. I just use a plastic zip tie, run it right through the eyes, and I'll put that plastic tag. It's got a number on it. I'll log that number by the guy's name in his book and also on his tag. And I'll store the tag where I need to store it. I don't put the tag back on the fish because it's got to go through a bunch of processes now to finish it so I usually just put them on, a, on my window frame with a pin and that's where they stay till I get to mount them. Now the next steps on this fish, like I said I'm gonna wrap this in a wet towel and freeze it until I get my body here so I don't want it soaking too long but the next step is going to be I like to soak it in methanol for some type of degreaser for an hour or two. So I'll just drop this fish in my bucket of methanol for a couple hours. I'll remove it from there, rinse it off good. And then it'll go, the next solution will be in um, a mixture of water with salt. Usually probably two cups of salt. Take two gallons of water, two cups of salt. Uh, a cup of borax, mix it up good, let it dissolve, mix it up in hot water, let it dissolve. Once it's dissolved and cooled back down, then I drop this fish in there for oh, 24 hours minimum, but I've left them in there for a week before, week 10 days, and that solution of salt and borax will get that fish, then you'd remove that fish from that solution and, and mount it. So. That would get you completely through the preparing mount. Now another solution you can use, I had a lot of guys degrease these and soak them in just Dawn dishwashing liquid and clean them up to degrease them. I like the methanol, seems to dry it out better, but the Dawn dishwashing liquid would work just as good. So whatever you learn, do some more reading, some more research, but I just gave you my process.